Commander. Succinct name and sharp-edged look. Sounds like a name for a new toy for hard outdoor cowboys. But is the Jeep Commander only a roughshod peasant, or does it possess fine manners? Norway, land of trolls and fjords. It was here that we test the commander's civil qualities, handling, comfort, and safety. The starting point is Nisidal in the heart of the Telemark region. The old ferry carries 14 tons. The commander is an enormous car, but weighs only 2,400 kilos. Nothing stands in the way of the journey across the Nissa Lake. Thousands of big and small lakes make up the Norwegian landscape. Nissa Lake is one of the largest. On the opposite shore, gravel roads lead deep into the vast forests. Under the commander's hood hides worthy technology from its gentler brother, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Chassis, engine, four-wheel drive system are well known from the Cherokee. The commander's off-road performance doesn't throw up any unexpected surprises either. Proportionately speaking, the size difference of the Commander is just a centimeter from that of the Grand Cherokee. The technology is identical. Is the new version an unnecessary clone of this square Jennifer Lopez? Before we can even answer this decisive question, an obstacle blocks the way. Now it is clear, no matter how you batter and trash, nothing gets through Norwegian woods without four-wheel drive. <laughs> The group is on a moose safari. Full of excitement of the hunt, we take a break. The commander can wait. Orla Svensson and elk dog Bingo lead the group into the woods. The moose are out of sight today, but at least we can learn something about the strange mating behavior of this long-legged giant deer. In the bronze height, so come the bull and they make a sort of In the mating season, the bull comes and makes a hole in the ground to make it easier for the calf later. Then the cow stands here and the bull comes here at her from this direction. Mm, honestly, no joke. That is war. Kind spouse. Back to the commander. On straight roads, the 218 horsepower diesel pushes strongly ahead. The typically American soft suspension doesn't like fast curves. The commander is prone to lean heavily to the side. For sporty drivers, the Grand Cherokee is the better choice. Until now, the commander doesn't have any obvious advantages compared to its little brother. Perhaps an internal evaluation would help. In appearance, the design has all the allure of a shoebox. Apart from the wheels, everything is very square, beautiful or not. It's an opinion that lies in the eye of the beholder. At least the commander shows a unique character. Something rustic, the continuously scaled wheel arch. Roof and handholds on the rear are a negative point. Please tell me who is supposed to hold on here. The split tailgate is fine for loading the shopping. Finally, the commander scores some points. Leg and headroom are much better than the Grand Cherokee. Even the cockpit is dominated by straight lines, idiot-proof. The four-wheel system with the automatic settings and three differential locks. Leather interior, air conditioning and CD changer are standard in the nearly 48,000 euros limited version. That trendy flat screen in the roof, however, costs extra. The commander's selling point is the third row of seats, which can comfortably seat two children. Nearly 2,000 litres of load space. It's a pity that the weight limit of 470 kilograms is almost reached with the expected burden of the seven passengers. This hefty three-litre diesel from the Mercedes Group deserves praise. It consumes approximately 13 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres driven. Seven seats and more space for a minimal surcharge. This is the decisive point as to why the angular shell of the Commander, compared to the round shape of the Grand Cherokee, makes sense. The crucial issue is finally resolved. Now there's time to enjoy the Norwegian nature. 
The local fishermen dominate a special technique called fly fishing. A small wooden board serves as a dinghy. On a long line hang numerous hooks where bait dances in the water, an extremely effective fishing method. With its rustic exterior, the commander is an impressive figure in the quaint villages. As a true seven-seater, it also has very little competition in the fiercely competitive SUV market. The Audi Q7 also offers seven-seaters as an option. In Ingolstadt, the base version without leather and the third row of seats is offered for 49,000 euros. The Nissan Pathfinder is offered starting at 35,000 euros. The Commander and Q7 are comparable. However, they are regarded as belonging to a higher level. Seven-seater on sale, the Chevrolet Captiva, and the 28,500 euros base price, one doesn't seem to notice minor weaknesses. Conclusion, the Jeep Commander is not a special bargain, nor is it a nimble performer in the curves. But what SUV can claim those virtues anyhow? Its positive points are the generous space, the powerful engine, the off-road capability, and the nearly complete equipment package.